Good morning, Secretary Blinken, distinguished guests, members of the diplomatic corps, esteemed colleagues, friends, and our 2024 global anti-racism champions. It is my distinct honor and privilege to warmly welcome you all to the Department of State for our second annual Global Anti-Racism Champions Awards. Today, we gather to honor six remarkable civil society leaders who have shown extraordinary courage in the face of some of the world's most pressing challenges. And while today may be the first time you are hearing their names or learning of their community's struggles, their dedication to the fight against racism and discrimination is making the world a safer, more peaceful place for all of us. Their work is nothing short of inspiring, and it is exactly what this moment demands. Around the world, including here in the United States, we are seeing a disturbing rise in racial and ethnic tensions. Across Europe, political groups are gaining momentum by exploiting ethnic divisions and promoting ethno-nationalism, often veiling white supremacist ideologies as efforts to protect cultural heritage and economic stability. Migrants and immigrants are increasingly being scapegoated, portrayed as threats to jobs and national identity, instead of being recognized for who they really are, human beings. Again, these events are not confined to Europe. Globally, conflicts rooted in race, ethnicity, and identity are intensifying. In Burma, we continue to witness the devastating persecution of Rohingya, a stark reminder that ethnic cleansing and racial violence are alive and well in today's world. In Sudan, warring parties have again engaged in targeted ethnic violence, and rapid support, support forces have committed ethnic cleansing, targeting many of the same communities that bore the brunt of the Darfur genocide over 20 years ago. In some parts of South and Central America, Indigenous peoples continue to be terrorized and killed for simply existing on the lands they have lived on and protected since time immemorial. And in Gaza and the West Bank, where issues of ethnicity and religion have long fueled conflict, the cycle of violence continues to take its toll on the most vulnerable communities. These conflicts exacerbate racism in ways that extend far beyond their immediate borders. Russia's brutal war against Ukraine spurred by Russia's unwillingness to see Ukrainians as their own people, has created a humanitarian crisis in which marginalized groups face disproportionate hardships. From Ukrainian Roma refugees in Europe who face segregation in substandard living conditions and reception centers, to Indian and African students in Ukraine who encounter discrimination at border crossings while trying to flee for their lives during the initial days of the full-scale invasion. And as regional violence broke out in Lebanon, we heard horrific stories of workers of African descent abandoned by employers, left without support in an increasingly hostile environment. These are not isolated incidents. They are part of a global pattern in which people belonging to marginalized racial and ethnic groups are treated as expendable or invisible. Yet, in each of these global conflicts, there are countless unsung heroes working tirelessly to serve the underserved, make the invisible visible bring the marginalized to the center, and foster equity and justice in their communities. It is against this backdrop that we honor today's awardees. They serve as beacon of hope during these bleak times. They stand courageously at the front lines of the fight against racism, and their work is a powerful testament to what can be achieved when we refuse to be passive in the face of injustice. The leaders we honor today are not waiting for change to come. They're actively making it happen. They are the somebody Brian Stevenson was referring to when he said, quote, somebody has to stand when other people are sitting. Somebody has to speak when other people are quiet, end quote. Each of these individuals exemplifies the courage, resilience, and leadership required to confront racism and discrimination at its core. Their work demonstrates that the fight for justice is far from over, and it will take all of us working together with the fierce urgency of now to create a world where race, ethnicity, or national origin do not determine one's worth or one's access to basic human rights. So while we are here today to honor these six leaders, they really honor us with their presence. And I'm grateful that they took their time away from their life-saving work to be here with us. With that, it is now my pleasure to give the floor to Secretary of State, Antony Blinken.
Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Let me just start by thanking the remarkable Desiree Coronet Smith for remarkable service at this department as our first ever special representative for racial justice and equity. Every day, uh, Desiree, her entire team, are working to create a fairer and more equal world for all of us and for generations to come. <laughs> Speaking of the next generation, uh, we're glad you added to it yourself, uh, some of you know, uh, with the most recent addition to Desiree's family and to the State Department family. I also want to thank Amber, Amber Green for very skillfully carrying forward this important work over these past few months. To our friends from across the United States government, our civil society partners, our private sector partners, thank you for joining us for the second presentation of the Secretary's Global Anti-Racism Champions Award. And to our six honorees, it is quite simply humbling to share this stage with you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your presence today, for your extraordinary work every day, which we'll talk about in just a couple of minutes. Uh, when President Biden took office nearly four years ago, the United States and many other societies were experiencing a racial reckoning. Too many people here at home, too many people around the world, continue to face discrimination and violence, to be denied education, to be denied economic opportunity, simply because of how they looked or where they were from. That's why on his very first day in office, the President signed an executive order directing the entire federal government to advance racial equity and justice for underserved communities, people of color, LGBTQI plus people, people with disabilities, racial minorities, at home and also around the world. This executive order was rooted in our values, but it was also based on hard-nosed self-interest. When individuals see themselves represented in their governments, that in turn enhances their faith in democratic institutions. If every community has access to opportunity, that boosts the nation's economic strength and its potential. Many of the biggest challenges we face here and around the world, climate change, disease, food insecurity, conflict, hit those who are overlooked and oppressed the hardest. We know that we cannot address these issues fully and effectively without listening to without factoring in the unique circumstances, needs, and perspectives of the most vulnerable among us. Here at the State Department, we've worked hard to bring greater justice and equity to our diplomacy, working to ensure that black farmers in South Africa can access U.S. seasonal agricultural visas, partnering with indigenous youth across the Western Hemisphere to find solutions to common challenges like climate change, like the loss of indigenous heritage and language along with Mexico and Canada, standing up the North American Partnership for Equity and Racial Justice to pool our efforts, to share best practices, to learn from each other how to address structural inequities. We've made progress, but even as we've made that progress, we know how much more work remains to be done. That's true here at home, where we continue to confront our shortcomings openly and honestly as democracies do. It's also true around the world, where we're still striving to realize the trust and the truth enshrined in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights that all human beings are born free, born equal, in dignity, and in rights. As we seek to realize that more just and equitable future, we have few greater partners than the civil society advocates like the courageous leaders that we honor today. So let me just say a few words about each of them. For those of you who are not familiar with their work, uh, it truly is extraordinary. Elvis Shakiri, a tireless champion for North Macedonia's Roma community who have faced generations of racial and economic injustice and are too often denied citizenship. Elvis and his group of colleagues started Romalitico to end the Roma statelessness. They've since registered hundreds of undocumented Roma, giving them access to government services, 
to education, to employment opportunities. Tavasa Yari Harkomi got her start in activism and politics as a union organizer in Bolivia. She was 12 years old. She went on to become the first indigenous woman elected municipal counselor uh, in Sucre, of Sucre, the first indigenous woman to head a Bolivian ministry, the first indigenous woman candidate for vice president of Bolivia. In a nation where indigenous people experience disproportionate rates of poverty and unemployment, she's worked to increase access to economic opportunity. And with each barrier broken, she's created space for other indigenous people to make their voices heard and to make lasting contributions to their community and their country. Thank you. When John Leardham went to study theater in the Netherlands, the dean told him that no Dutch theater company would hire him because he was black. Experiences like this inspired John to raise awareness about Dutch colonial history and slavery. He's directed over 70 productions on stage and screen, which he says are mostly black stories that needed to be told. He served as a member of parliament for seven years. John's now undertaking a new project, the planning of a national slavery museum in Amsterdam to ensure that even more of these essential stories are told and that history's lessons are learned. As executive director of Save Ghana, Diti Sule Tiuru promotes the inclusion of the Fulve people, a marginalized ethnic group in Ghana. Because of uh, this remarkable work, many Fulve now have access to basic services like clean water. They've been able to register to vote for the very first time. With greater representation, they can more effectively advocate for greater access to public services. Ormila Chaudhari has been advancing human rights and economic justice for indigenous women in Nepal for nearly two decades. Ramiro was sold into domestic servitude at the age of six before being rescued at 17. Only then was she able to learn to read and write. Ramiro started a nonprofit organization that locates, frees, and empowers women and girls in situations like hers. She's also co-authored a book to share her own experiences and raise awareness about forced labor and child slavery. Our last honoree, Tanya Duarte, a psychologist and professor. For over 35 years, Tanya has cared for victims of domestic and sexual violence while also strengthening the rights of Afro-Mexicans. She's advised Mexico Supreme Court and other government institutions. She launched the Afro Descendants Project to enable individuals of Afro descent to share their stories, to promote their human rights, recognition, and equality in Mexico and all around the world. Today, the Afro Descendants Project has thousands of international participants. For all of us here at the department, coming together with leaders like these is quite simply inspiring. In so many parts of the world, there are those who are unable to see the humanity in others because of their race, their ethnicity, their religion, their sexual orientation or gender. Dehumanization is what poisons our common well. The courage of these honorees, the causes and the communities that they represent, this is the most powerful antidote to hate, to despair, to hateful acts, to hardened hearts. And that's why we come together today, to celebrate their extraordinary achievement. And it's also why we have to continue the work of promoting human rights for all. So to each of our honorees, congratulations. But mostly, thank you. Thank you for the work that you do. Thank you for the example that you set. Thank you for your inspiration. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. I will now read the citations on the awards that the Secretary will present to each honoree. First, Dinte Sule Tairu.
for demonstrating exceptional courage, strength, and leadership and commitment to inclusion and advancing the human rights of marginalized groups in combating systemic discrimination, racism, and xenophobia while promoting economic development and inclusive governance for full Bay communities in the Upper West region of Ghana. Tanja Duarte for demonstrating exceptional courage, strength, leadership, and commitment to advancing the human rights of Afro-descendant communities in Mexico in combating systemic racism, discrimination, xenophobia, gender-based violence, and other intersectional abuses while promoting equitable access to education, justice, and political participation for Afro-Mexicans. John Leardom for demonstrating exceptional courage, strength, leadership, and commitment to advancing the human rights of black Dutch citizens in combating systemic racism, discrimination, and xenophobia while advocating for robust recognition of the lived experiences and contributions of people of African descent to Dutch society. Elvis Shakiri for demonstrating exceptional courage, strength, leadership, and commitment to advancing the human rights of the Roma people in North Macedonia and combating systemic racism, discrimination, and xenophobia while creating inclusion for marginalized people in local and national policies. <laughs> Armila Chowdhury for demonstrating exceptional courage, strength, leadership, and commitment to advancing the human rights of members of marginalized castes and ethnic communities in Nepal in combating systemic racism, discrimination, xenophobia, and other intersectional abuses while playing a crucial role in social justice movements to promote equitable access to economic development. <laughs> Tomasa Yari Hokeme for demonstrating exceptional courage, strength, leadership, and commitment to advancing the human rights of indigenous peoples in Bolivia in combating systemic racism, discrimination, xenophobia, and gender-based violence. It is now my great honor to give the floor to Tanja, Tanja Duarte from Mexico, who will offer brief remarks on behalf of this year's awardees. If Tanja will offer remarks in Spanish, so if you need interpretation, kindly put on your headsets and turn to channel three. Good morning. Thank you so much. Welcome, everyone. Thank you to be here. Thank you so much to the Secretary, Anthony Blinken. Thank you. And thank you to the special representative, Desiree Cornert Smith. Thank you. Gracias al Departamento de Estado de los Estados Unidos y gracias a todas las organizaciones y todas las personas involucradas que han hecho posible este sueño para todos nosotros, para todas nosotras. Honro a mis ancestras, a mis ancestros familiares, de quienes heredé mi realidad corporal, mi cabello y la voz que da fuerza a mi palabra. Honro a mis ancestras, ancestros que elevan mi alma, guían mis ideales, construyen mis valores en las más extensas de las libertades. Mi corazón Está lleno My de inmensa gratitud por la ancestralidad de todas las personas aquí presentes here today. y de mis compañeras y compañeros. And the of my Gracias por compartir sus Thank historias, so much for su valentía, your stories, determinación your courage, con una mirada siempre al futuro, with a look una to mirada the que se muestra como un crisol de culturas en nuestros diversos contextos, in espacios temporales, contexts, atemporales, time, que se reflejan como modelos de re-evolución, que conforman nuestro pensamiento, nuestra comprensión, 
comprensión de quiénes somos, cómo somos y lo que queremos ser para nuestras familias y comunidades. Queremos un mundo inclusivo, con paz y salud para nuestras comunidades for our communities para la comunidad indígena, for the indigenous community, the personas con capacidades especiales y la comunidad LGBT. Abilities and the LGBT Aunque venimos de distintas latitudes, Even we come distintos from continentes, latitudes, y no nos conocíamos, and we had not ya existía un vínculo entre there was nosotros, already a bond que es la búsqueda de la dignidad, us, la paz, la salud, pursuit of dignity, educación peace, health, y el bienestar para nuestras comunidades of our en todo el mundo. All around the world. Pero también para atender But also nuestro planeta, to take nuestra care tierra, of our planet, our el land, medio ambiente, the environment, de una forma sustentable. And Estamos aquí para alzar nuestra palabra y darle voz a la niñez, hoy esclavizada, racializada, y erradicar el embarazo infantil, and to eradicate el matrimonio child forzado de niñas, forced y la violencia de género, y cualquier tipo de violencia, gender race violence and all forms of violence Estamos in this world. We are here to raise our voices against institutional, institutional racism, e historico, constitutional and historic racism, racism which has been Solo present a través de in la many of our countries. La equidad, it is only through la education, igualdad, equity, abrazaremos and generaremos la dignidad we que todos los seres humanos merecen. That all of us human Nuestro beings segundo nombre es la resiliencia name Estamos is resilience. We are here a to give a voice to hundreds de nosotros, of people pero behind us, para darle voz but also to a give a voice to the future generations. Muchas gracias a mis Thank you very much a mis to my co-authorities here for gracias your struggles, for your strength, and thank you gracias for this award. Thank you for mirarnos, turning around to look at us, support us, y comfort us, and strengthen corazones. our spirits Hacernos and our hearts. For, thank you for making us feel todo lo that que all of the sacrifices we made la and everything that we Esta put in danger was worth it. This experience fills us with hope and inspiration no and it no reiterates solos. that we are not Esto es alone un paso in our struggle. This is a huge state towards a violence de amor free y life that is full of love and dignity for all Gracias. mankind. Thank you. Thank you, Tancha. Let me close um, by thanking to all of you who joined us today in person and virtually. Thank you for being here with us to celebrate and honor these truly phenomenal leaders. None of this would have been possible without the tireless work of so many behind the scenes, so I must briefly just thank them. To our colleagues in protocol, thank you. To the interpreters, thank you. To the cleaning staff who ensured the auditorium was spotless for you and will ensure that it is just as pristine for those who come after us, thank you. And last and certainly but not least, let me thank my phenomenal S. Reg team, um, you just joyful justice warriors, you thank you can never be enough to fully express my deep gratitude for the countless hours each of you put in to make today possible. Thank you. I want to also. And I must once again thank our honorees. Um, I hope that today's humble recognition of your critical work strengthens your resolve to continue to stand and speak. And I hope that the solidarity you build amongst each other and with US civil rights organizations that you meet during your time here reminds you of just what Tanja said, that you are not alone. Finally, I wanna close with a call to action for all of you. I hope that you see yourselves in this year's honorees and their struggles for equality and justice. I hope that learning about their work conjures up this reminder from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. that is especially apt for this moment in time, that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly." End quote. 
Let us carry that spirit of mutuality forward as we continue our collective journey towards equality, dignity, and justice for all. Thank you. Distinguished guests, thank you so much for coming. This concludes our ceremony. Please remain in your seats while our stage participants depart.